Welcome and thank you for clicking on my video today. We're going to get into some technical analysis for the SPY Qs, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, and Meta going forward. And we're also going to look after we get into the SPY and the Qs, we're going to look at Netflix. Big earnings going on today. And as of right now, we are seeing Netflix hold at lower levels, really seeing a sell off with that news. And we're going to get into that right now, right after we talk about the SPY and the Qs. First off on the SPY, I just wanted to point out where are we going towards? Well, we're going towards that 20 week moving average. Remember, this is what we've been saying ever since we saw last week's so over the weekend. We were really saying, yeah, we could go directly for that 20 week moving average as we are holding below the five. So as I bring up all the drawings, I just want to cut out all the noise and show you guys how that looks right there and we're starting to approach it but right now we're at that weekly expected move so we're at that weekly expected move we expect to hold up from that level if we do hold up maybe we get some kind of reaction down as of next week but as of right now it's looking like down is the the trend right now and so we kind of can't fight against that too much but we can find some possible trade setups so if you were uh, live with us today we were talking a lot about these 15 minute charts looking like they were getting some divergences for some potential bounces these bounces they just led to some more flagging, right? They led to some more flagging. So if I spread out this MACD, we can just see down here how we're going to curl back down into negative territory. Now, what's happening right now? Well, we have a divergence that's getting even closer to positive territory. So it's a time to pay attention because we could see some kind of bounce. Now, I'm not saying that it has to at, at any point here. I'm just saying that that's what it looks like, especially as you are at that weekly expected move. You could expect to land in this zone. So if we do see a hip fire move out of this, look if we land back in this zone because 68% of the time we do that. Now, this could be one of those times where 68% chance we land outside of this zone. So we want to have a number to pay attention to. And those numbers would be these red lines. That's your daily expected move that the options market has priced in, which is what we're going to go over on Netflix. We actually made the daily expected move for Netflix, the options market, what it is pricing in for Netflix tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is a big move. So stick around after the spy and the cues for that. But we have 504.58 to the upside for the spy tomorrow. And then we have 494.46 to the downside for the spy. So a big move here. Now this 494.46 actually does sit pretty close to that 20 week moving average. So we'll pay attention to that. If we see some downside, maybe we want to test that 20 week moving average and then start to head up. But I can tell you right now, there's a lot of liquidity and liquidity in this area here. So if we're able to break through this at any point going on over the next few days, it's going to be pretty bullish. We're going to see a big, big bounce if that happens. And we may even get as high as 510 into this zone up here. Okay, so we can see some kind of strong move, then use that and see if we go up from there. Maybe that's all we get. We'll have to pay attention to that, but we trade like water on this channel. Remember that you are at that weekly expected move and you do have that 68% chance to lead into here, but you do have a triple divergence forming down here. Now that hasn't confirmed, hasn't gone positive. We like that thing to go positive to really see that positive move come in and how this could still end up going up is we're just building a bunch of liquidity in this area and then we see an explosive move going on into next week. So we'll just pay attention to any upside. But right now the trend is negative. I want to point that out. The daily side, the weekly side, those bigger time frames, they do not look pretty. And it looks like we could see that selling very well continue. So I would encourage you to trade like water, be very adaptable and get that risk managed. Q is a little different on the weekly scale, getting some curlovers on the MACD. First of all, we're getting some curlovers on the MACD, but we are testing that 20 week moving average right now and we are outside of that weekly expected move. So you actually have a 68% chance for some kind of bounce here, but it's cool to see. We were telling you how it might go to that 20 week moving average. That would make a lot of sense. And we headed there pretty quick, like pretty fast. And we are seeing some tapering at this level. We're getting tight. We're probably forming some form of wedge in here. So we could see this start to get some kind of bounce. We'll have to talk about that as we go forward because we're testing that 20 week moving average. Maybe some support is able to come in. So we're paying attention to that. And what can we pay attention to tomorrow? Well, we have the weekly expected move right above us. This per this purple line up here is actually the bottom of it. So you're outside of it right now and do have a 68% chance to land up in this zone. So this zone right here is looking pretty good to land in from a probability perspective between 427.11 and 428.45, which happens to be our upper side of that daily expected move. Okay, so the upper side daily expected move, 428.45. Uh, to the upside and then you have 4 1837 to the downside for tomorrow's expected move that's all the options market has priced in so if we make a move outside of that very quickly look for that fade if we make a move to the downside look for that to buy back up maybe if we see that dramatic downside we're going to get the spy to test its 20 and then we'll have to see what happens as of next week if we see any signals down here because as of right now you're getting this confirmation down here 
um, of the MACD of this divergence. Okay, you have a triple divergence on the MACD and RSI at the same time. This is getting you close to going up into positive territory, to curling up and getting into a change in trend. And you notice we could make that happen very soon if we can just break through this trend right here. So if we are able to break through, we could see something happen here. We can go into a positive trend and actually see this buy up. Is that going to be a lower high at that point? Um, we'll have to pay attention to that going forward. I'm kind of leaning towards that, but as of right now, I'm just stating that there is a triple divergence down here on the MACD and RSI at the same time, and now we can get into Netflix. Now, Netflix has a big move price, and you know that because you can't even see it on my screen right now. You can't even see the lines that I've made for that daily expected move for tomorrow. Uh, the thing about Netflix we were talking about, yes, you have divergence down here for some kind of double bottom. If we're able to break through this high, you can see a strong move. So it makes sense to have a big move with that earnings. But that's exactly why we're not trading the stock right now. It is earnings. This is a 50-50 flip. If we actually go into the data here, we're actually noticing they beat on both. So you're probably asking yourself, why did they beat on both? If you're bullish on this, you took a call for tomorrow. You're probably like, why is it not going up? They beat on both. Well, it turns out they are going to stop giving their subscriber data, which is actually really funny because that's like the whole point of Netflix is to show how many subscribers they have. It shows how many clients they really have. And it's in a downward trend here. You weren't able to break through that. So we end up heading lower. Now, where are we at right now? Looks like 579.03. And I'll have to zoom out for a little bit to show you guys exactly how low this can go tomorrow and the daily expected move for tomorrow first of all the upside 677.81 that's what it could have been because it looks like downside is more likely uh 543.31 to the downside unless people start to ignore this throughout the night and we see that bot back up uh it's looking like we're going to get a gap down and this is exactly how low it could go now the one thing about this is if you're short on this that would tell you that around this area, that is all it is expected to go. So at 543.31, uh, that's going to be the area where taking profit would be very good. Now, if you get outside of that, that's where you can see a bounce happen because you land in this zone 68% of the time. Okay, so Friday, tomorrow's close by tomorrow close. If you are outside of this, you can see that bounce by end of day. I'd be very careful with this bounce. If that is bad news for Netflix, it goes into that full on negative trend since it's already in one. Um, we could just see some kind of dead cat bounce and see that roll back over. And we can pay attention to our 30 minutes if we want to um, trade any of those downturns, right? We just swing trade that thing on the way down. As of right now, no divergences, anything like that to look at. It's just, I just wanted to show you these daily expected moves because they're huge. And I felt like having a target for tomorrow for some people would be very, very good. So 543.31 is what I would be looking at as far as Netflix goes for tomorrow. Apple is losing a very important point down here. Remember, we were talking about some kind of double bottom forming. We're not really seeing that buy back up. Now, we're going to go into the shorter time frames with this. But as of right now, you're heading to lower levels. You're breaking through a new low. You're making a new low. So even if we do get a bounce here, we actually can still get a lower high. So I would pay attention to that. Even if we, we could actually get a full reaction up into this zone as well, because we have so many divergences down here. But with Apple, it's important to have those daily ranges as well. And we're posting those on Patreon. Those are already out there. So if you want to get on the, uh, be a part of the Patreon, choose to support the channel and get some helpful tools, go down in the description and join Patreon where we do talk about stocks uh, a little bit throughout the week. And then also we give you the weekly, monthly, and daily expected moves, daily expected moves for all the stocks that we cover on Fridays. So look at that. We get the daily expected move for Apple. Now we know exactly how high and exactly how low this thing is um, priced in to go tomorrow. That's important. Priced in to go tomorrow. If we start to get outside of that, it can escalate. If we get outside of that, though, you have a 68% chance to land back in that zone. So I'd pay attention to that with Apple. I'm going to go into a 15 minute here and just show you guys how we have some wonky MACD behavior here. Very flat up here, holding up by positive territory and kind of trying to curl up at the end of the day. Now that could be some flagging to get another push down, maybe pay attention to my daily expected move at that point. But right now you have to say price is very, very tight and we could get an explosive move. And the, the MACD down here is telling you the momentum to the downside is a little dead right now. So we could get some kind of bounce out of Apple. What would most likely happen here though? It really seems like we would get some kind of lower high at this point. That's really what I'm leaning towards, but I'm open to a lot of things. Make sure this positive territory is getting into right make sure that these divergences are leading to a cross into positive territory because you could just build up to that center line roll back over and we could see another dip lower if that just flags out a little bit longer so pay attention to the daily expected moves for apple tomorrow
Tesla, we are in our zone. Okay, so we talked about this yesterday. How if you're a good day trader, you can you can trade this stuff, right? Point down, come down into this area, you know, see some kind of drop, and then just take your profit pretty early on in the day. Would have been a good trade. Uh, but when you do see something so oversold for quite some time, and I'm starting to see divergences now, it's just not the best time to find a position. You'd really want that to build up and then see some kind of drop. So right now you're seeing some divergence down here. Take it with a grain of salt. You're moving sideways, so it looks like a another drop is very likely. Could we just continue to move sideways a little longer, get closer to that center line? Well, that would tell me that the drop might be more significant. If we drop right now, I'm leaning towards, you know, it holding up between this area here. So if we drop right now, we could head into this area right here. I'd say 145, 145, 146, right in that area looks pretty good for Tesla to see maybe some kind of bounce. We have to confirm these divergences, right? We have to confirm them by really getting into positive territory. Confirmation on the MACD is great. Confirmation going into positive territory is what you're looking for to actually hold on to that play. But Tesla breaking down to lower, lower levels. It's in a big zone right now. So that's what we were talking about with Tesla. It's just got such a big demand zone down here. Um, if you pull it across right right over here, you're going to see some price action. Boom. That's your really last little bit of liquidity in here. Been a bundle of price action before we rocket it up. So you could play around in this area for quite some time. We could just mess around in this area for a long time and then see a break up or see a breakdown. As of right now, 15 minute divergence, not able to get into positive territory at this moment. So um, Tesla looking a little bit scary. Maybe as it keeps extending, we want to reconnect with the five at some point and then get rejected. I'd pay attention to that. One thing on Tesla I do want to mention before heading off to the next stock. Uh, look at the daily MACD showing you triple divergence where it's at right now, right? You see all these lows, and then we see triple divergence on the MACD down here. So Tesla actually could be getting a big move. The only problem is you have earnings. So earnings is going to be a 50-50 flip. No longer really the, the technicals around earnings. Obviously, they don't mean too much, right? Because Netflix just showed you. It had a bunch of divergences that said, hey, we can see some kind of bounce, but earnings is a 50-50 flip, and that's why we won't be messing around with Tesla. Amazon on the daily able to confirm these divergences up here, right? You had a triple divergence between this and we knew the insiders were selling in this move and now we're breaking down to the 50 and we're still tight. So we haven't gotten that big explosive move from Amazon, which means it is holding up, like whether or not you like to say it or not, it is holding up and you do have some 30 minute divergence forming in the near price action. So we could see that lead to some buying up. You have flatness of the MACD and an upward move on the RSI down here. So that's something to pay attention to. Now, if I pull that up in a 15, maybe it looks a little bit different. Maybe the 15 wants to go into a positive trend. We're seeing those divergences in the near price action, MACD and RSI at the same time. So if we get some kind of bounce here, okay, we can see that positivity, but we have to see that go positive for that to come in. Because if we remain down here in negative territory, any little flagging, any little bounce will be ripped away if we keep crossing down on this MACD. Okay, so pay attention to that going forward. If you want to learn about this, the, the MACD, the indicators, how we do things around here, weekly ranges, everything like that, get a good insight and get some good knowledge and skills, you can go take the course down in the description video on the daily it's looking like it might turn down again just pay attention if we start to lose this area i thought it was really interesting early on today just for a couple minutes there we came all the way down to 824 this is outside of the weekly expected move at that point and it buys right back up so if anyone had the balls to take that congratulations because that is a great great trade comes outside of that weekly expected move we wick up and we see a solid bounce here now that bounce does lead to some downside but what if this is a higher low. That's what we have to pay attention to right now. If this 15 minute is able to go positive, then this might just be some kind of a big dramatic drop to grab some liquidity down here to then get some pop, to grab some buyers to get another pop higher. So we're going to pay attention to that with NVIDIA tomorrow. But if this just wants to roll over right now, it's already right there. It's right in the middle. So pretty much if it wants to roll over now, it could take out this low, go make a new one. And that would be very bad news, especially as you're approaching that weekly expected move. Maybe we are able to hold up around that level, but it's really looking like we may want to curl up into positive territory for NVIDIA tomorrow. It will be interesting to see. And we just have to watch the price action, right? Right now it's flagging a little bit on this 15 minutes. So we could see some kind of drop. So we just want to pay attention to the price action and re react with whatever the stock decides to do tomorrow. AMD, this one's been just going down and down and down negative trend for a very long time. And there are plays to be had with a stock like this. You see it build up towards that center line, cross down. Once it goes negative, there's your trigger. Boom, it flushes. 
absolutely flushes here. This is one of the trades that I took this week, got into my position here, sold out at this wick down here, and I was able to make a solid amount of profit. Now we're starting to try to taper again. We're bundling up liquidity, which means we're building towards that center line. We have the potential for some kind of reversal, but as we keep dropping even steeper down, violating some, some uh, trends here, uh, violating really the, the tapering that was going on right here, we could just see this as some kind of flagging, and then we start to head down again. So what I'm going to pay attention to with the AMD is if it still builds up a little bit more to that center line, just rolls over, or if it rolls down early on in the morning, we could see another significant drop from AMD. So I would pay attention to that. And then if I do take a play like that, I can take profit around my daily expected move that I got on Patreon. So that is very, very cool. But AMD has looked weak for quite some time. So you have to expect more weakness. The trend is your friend in this scenario until you see it go positive and really give you that L higher low to, to continue into positive territory here. That's what I'd pay attention to with AMD. Meta, this was a very strong move upward, and then we pull back, and now are we going to get an ABC pattern up? Well, the thing you need to happen, curling up at the MACD, right? You need that to curl up into positive territory. That would be a positive sign, but as of right now, a little bit of flagging at the end of the day, and we're seeing in the post market it start to drop down a little bit. So we'll have to pay attention in the morning. If this wants to, look where it is. It's right in the middle. So it's telling you, hey, I got a shot to go higher, but this one, I got a shot to go lower. So the probabilities here are kind of 50-50 with this one um, on the 15-minute. So if we do see that curl up, positive territory, most likely we're going to make a new high um, above this one right here. But if we start to curl down, well, then we're most likely maybe going to test this low right here. I would really first be paying attention to this level of 497.13. If we break through there, then I would say gap fill. And if we break through there, then you would say the low. You kind of got to take the steps down with your support here. Uh, but it's looking like this is a good support. If we're able to hold up at that, okay. If we lose it, look for that gap. If we lose that, then we're probably testing this low. And if we lose that, things might be very, very bad for meta going forward. Now, one thing about volatility I wanted to bring up, we're still in that crash scenario. We're above the 200. We're getting green bars above it. We're getting that 50 to almost cross that 200. Is that going to happen? We'll have to see because right now I wanted to point out something interesting. In this here, you have a high, a low, a lower, uh, a uh, an even low, right? And then a higher high. And then on the next bar, we have a higher low. We have a higher high. Now we have a higher high, a higher low. And then on this one right here, the last couple of days, we have a lower high, even low, lower high, lower low. So as of right now, actually the shorter time frames for volatility are kind of decreasing. Um, so that would tell me, what if this wants to roll over and go fill this gap down here at 13? We see some bullishness or maybe retest that 200. That would be the bullish case for the stock market. Volatility drops off a little bit. Uh, but if we wanted to see another move higher in volatility, what would happen? Well, this two hour, this two hour is going to curl up into positive territory. Okay, this is very, very simple. You're going to see the two hour curl up into positive territory. Now, I like the stock market, aka the spy, to match something that I'm paying attention to. So if I was seeing some kind of divergence, like some kind of bounce to the upside with a divergence or something like that, or some kind of 30 minute that's about to roll down, maybe near negative territory or in it, then I would say, okay, this has a good likelihood because it looks, it's matching the spy. As of right now, I don't know that this actually does curl up. I'm paying attention to it in case it happens. We haven't sold this or we haven't really dropped dramatically in the VIX readings. So we'll pay attention to this, even though we're seeing those, some calls trickle in and seeing that volatility come down, we're seeing lower prices in the stock market. So one of these is wrong. Either it's volatility dropping off is wrong or the stock market dropping lower is wrong. And as of right now, we're seeing this could just curl back up into positive territory to get that real big crash scenario very, very likely. Um, but also, what if this just continues down and this was some kind of fluke? So that's what I'm paying attention to. And I wanted to point out those those lower highs and lower lows on the VIX in the recent couple days. So the main takeaway for this video is Netflix looks like it has a huge move and now you have a couple of levels to pay attention to based on the options market. They told you some prices to look for for Netflix tomorrow and it is a very big move. Will that selling lead into selling for other stocks? Well, they actually performed well. The only thing that really I can see that brought them down was they were going to stop telling you how many subscribers they have, which is very interesting since that's pretty much their whole business plan. Uh, very interesting going forward. But uh, as it stands, it looks like stocks are continuing to head lower. We could see a bounce with some of these divergences. But if we keep curling over into negative territory, we are now in those shorter time frame negative trends, and those can very well 
continue. So I just want to leave you guys with Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. You guys are joining the Patreon. People are taking the course, telling me how much they like that. And then they're also coming live every single day and just contributing to the chat. And I really appreciate that. Liking, subscribing, you guys are always fantastic about that. And I just wanted to wish you guys a great, great night and all the luck in the world trading tomorrow. Peace.